to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 135. Listener feedback, episode number 14. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and pick up some of your favorite Mayberry stuff. Any Mayberry fan in your life is going to love these things. So drop by over there, just browse around, you'll find things you like. Weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners like you. Executive producer of Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 135, is my wife, Jan Newsom, because she lets me come in here and do this. So, <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, Alan Newsom, and it is great to have you with me. We've got several folks in the live chat room tonight, and they're visiting with one another, and uh, that's a lot of fun. Everybody's getting to know one another and visit as they have to listen to me uh, read and talk here. So what we're going to be doing tonight is catching up on some of the feedback from some of you guys. You guys have called in, you've written in, you've posted on Facebook, you've posted comments on the website, uh, twochairsnowaiting.com, and I just wanted to uh, thank you for that. And you guys had some really nice insights about things that were going on around the Andy Griffith Show and in some of the podcasts that I've already done. So we're going to be hitting the highlights from there. We're going to start off with a voicemail. We're going to get right into it from Whistling Tim. So here's a uh, here's a call from uh, Whistling Tim. Hi, Alan. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick call and uh, try to be brief here. Um, this is Whistler Tim down here in South Carolina, and just want to let you know that uh, listening uh, every week and uh, appreciate what you're doing. And uh, just the other day, I was watching the uh, episode uh, Barney's Physical, and uh, I'm sure you'll remember Barney was celebrating that fifth year of being on the floor so with Andy, and uh, you know they had the big celebration there and gave him his watch with five on the back of it and all that, but uh, there toward the end, you know, Barney didn't meet up to the to the height and the weight there for the, for the law, man, and it was looking pretty bad, and uh, Aunt B was trying to fatten him up, and you remember he was sitting there at the table with his civilian clothes on, and I happened to notice that Barney looked to me like he had a pack of uh, cigarettes in his pocket. Now, I know in the past, uh, you know, I've seen Andy smoke a couple times on the show, but I never saw Barney smoke. And uh, I've read his books. I don't remember whether it says he was a smoker or not. I was just curious if, you know, if you've ever noticed that. And uh, is there any any time that uh, we ever saw uh, Don Nye smoke on the show? I don't believe there is. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, I'm from tobacco country. I know back then that uh, especially... It was quite common for most men to smoke, and a lot of women, but, uh, and so it was on the show. But anyway, uh, just like your thoughts on that, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Again, appreciate what you do and listen every week. Talk to you later. Hey, Tim, I want to thank you for uh, calling in. And, you know, as, as Tim was uh, talking about that, you folks may uh, surely remember uh, Barney's physical. It's when uh, Barney was... Uh, you know, he was asked to uh, to gain weight. He didn't weigh enough, or and he wasn't tall enough. Uh, this got me looking at that episode, so I, I grabbed this sound clip because I just had to play it for you. But this is uh, when Barney, at the beginning, was celebrating his fifth anniversary on the force. And uh, that happened to have been on May 16th was that day. Well, today, as I record this, is the 9th. Next week is probably when I should have done this because I would have been recording it the episode on May 16th. But uh, anyway, let's listen to this sound clip, and then we'll talk some more about what Tim had to say because Tim had some really good insights. And uh, let's just listen to this. Stainless steel, wow. Yeah, and it's got writing on the back. Oh, that's nice. It's, that's nice. Read it, Bonnie. Read it. What does it say? Five. We thought we'd put five on it because you've been in for five years. <laughs> you like it, Barney? <laughs> you like it, Barney? You like it? All right, well, as I was looking at this, now, there'll be pictures of this, uh, what I'm going to be talking about, on uh, 
facebook.com. If you go there, they'll have links that take you to facebook.com slash two chairs. We'll have the pictures posted there of what we're going to talk about. But Tim was mentioning that in Barney's pocket that he saw uh, something in his pocket. Well, there's definitely something in his pocket uh, on the episode, and you can definitely see that. Now, what I what I really noticed, though, was that about, uh, I guess, let's see, what how much time was it? I believe it was 13 minutes into the episode. Yes, when uh, Barney is about 13 minutes into the episode, if you have the uh, season sets on DVD, you'll see uh, Barney sit down and you'll see a pocket there. But before that, Andy and Barney are in the living room and Andy's trying to convince Barney to, hey, we're, Aunt B's going to try to fatten you up and you're going to be able to eat and gain weight and you're going to then be able to, uh, we're going to stretch you using ACEs. Uh, thing goes around his neck that was supposed to stretch him. You, you remember all that. So just remember that. Now, what I've got on facebook.com slash two chairs for episode number 135, you'll see pictures of Barney and Andy in the living room. And what I want you to look at is Barney's left-hand side where the shirt pocket would be. They're standing up in front of the, the couch. And when they're standing there, there is no pocket on that shirt. But Andy convinces Barney, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Now, I've looked really close at this. It's not like the pocket is ironed down tight to the shirt or, or, or something. It's just not there. And then they go over and sit down. The pocket's still not there, but as soon as the camera angle changes, there's a pocket on the front of Barney's shirt. And sure enough, that's what Tim was talking about. In that pocket, that you can see plainly because it zooms in and the pocket is open. You, there's something in that pocket. And, and the camera gets really close because they're showing the food that Barney's going to have to eat. But the pocket is clearly open, and you can see that you think there's something in it. Well, a little later in the shot, it shows Barney eating. And I, I froze it and shrank it down real small or real, real tight. And you can see in his pocket what looks to be the top of a cigarette pack with the cigarettes actually showing. You can actually see them in his pocket. So, yes, uh, Barney, or Don Knotts, evidently he did smoke because there they are right in his pocket. It's really easy to see them. And, uh, you know, I don't remember an episode of the Andy Griffith Show where Barney was actually smoking, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, that that's what is in Don Knotts' pocket on that episode. You can see it in uh, several, several shots that were taken during that episode. So, anyway, I want to thank Tim for... Uh, calling that in because i wouldn't have been looking into that pocket if uh if he hadn't mentioned it and i would have certainly not noticed that he had no pocket and then suddenly he did have a pocket the shirt looks exactly the same but he has a left hand shirt pocket after he sits down at the table that he didn't have while andy and he were talking in the uh <laughs> talking in the in the living room so Anyway, so I hope you like that. That's that's the kind of thing I absolutely love is running across those kind of little uh, trivial trivialities and something for you to watch for when you watch Barney's Physical. We'll have pictures again at facebook.com slash two chairs. So you drop by over there. Okay, now we got another call, and this one is from our friend Paul Mulick, and he's referring to the episode where we talked about uh, uh, the uh, poor butterfly the uh, whole podcast that we did about that. So here is Paul. Hey, Alan, it's Paul Mulek again, calling from the Show Me State. Uh, I enjoyed your recent episode about the song Poor Butterfly. Uh, you mentioned that it was used in two episodes, and I think you're correct in that. Um, but you might want to check out a scene in the episode, Look, Paul, I'm Dancing. It's about 17 minutes in. It's a scene where... Aunt B forgets the Morrison sisters' cardinal rule and goes into the barber shop uh, anyway. And Floyd and Goober and Aunt B discuss uh, some songs there, and that "Poor Butterfly" is one of the songs that Floyd mentions. But they didn't use it in the episode. Anyway, I thought I'd uh, point out that little trivial triviality to you. So long. All right. So Paul is talking about "Look, Pa, I'm Dancing." So the episode, Look, Pa, I'm Dancing, you, you can find that. We'll have a link to it on the show notes page at Two Chairs No Waiting for this episode, number 135. 
and you'll be able to go directly and you can read about it. And uh, that episode was a color episode. So you'll you'll see that there. Now, here is the scene in which he was talking about because I went and found it. And Paul, again, was right. So here is this is the courthouse or not the courthouse, the barber shop. And Floyd is in there and Goober and Aunt B comes into the uh, barber shop to talk to Floyd and Goober. Floyd, you listen to radio music a lot, don't you? Oh, my, yes. Soothing. Real soothing. Well, I have to buy a dance record. Have you heard any new dance numbers lately? Something for a frightened little boy? Opie? Mm-hmm. Uh, but let me see. You should know something, Goober. Well, they're playing a lot of that country music. No, I don't think that'll be right. Roses of Picardy. Oh, Floyd, <laughs> even I remember that. <laughs> Let's see, what are some of them songs they play out the roadhouse? It should be something simple and slow. Kind of like a hymn. No, he's learning to dance. Yes, we have no bananas. <laughs> no good. Maybe I just can't seem to remember any of the names of any of them songs I've been dancing to. Why don't you go to the record store? I know Arnold Pruitt will be able to help you out. Yes, I was on my way. I just thought you might have some ideas. Thank you both, anyway. That's okay. Yeah. Poor butterfly! Poor butterfly! <laughs> <laughs> Poor butterfly! So Paul Mulek remembered that. Now, you'll remember the uh, podcast that we did, Poor Butterfly. Here's the music. So this is uh, this is the music from My Fair Ernest T. Bass, where the Poor Butterflies played. She seems to like it. Yeah. So there's, there's the music, Poor Butterfly, playing in the background. It's also played on Convicts at Large. It's perfectly all right. Now, if you want to dance with somebody else, well, you just tag and you get your turn. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> okay, so that's Poor Butterfly. And Paul remembered uh, that uh, Floyd had used that term or that name of a music uh, on the episode... Uh, look, Paul, I'm dancing. So, folks, hey, uh, great job, Paul Mulek, and thank you again for adding to uh, the trivial triviality knowledge that all of us Mayberry fans had. Great, great catch on that. So thanks again, Paul. Now, we've got a whole lot of feedback that was in the form of emails and such, so let me get started on that. The first email is, again, this is from Whistler Tim. He had written in. He said, uh, this is reference to episode number 125, Gene Carson, Happy Birthday. He said, Hi, Alan, I just wanted to give you some feedback from Hello Doll, the Hello Doll show you did about a month or so back. As usual, I, I put on my iPod and made my walk through the neighborhood, and there it was. Uh, Hello Doll. Hello Doll. <laughs> and I'm walking down the road laughing, and sure, everyone is thinking, he's a nut. I always loved the episodes with Gene Carson, so it made my day. But then the County is Vantilecki of it all kicked in. As usual, I was watching TV the next morning, and on comes the Twilight Zone. And guess which episode it was? That's right, the Magic Camera episode with none other than Gene Carson. Uh, that's some extra sensitive perception, I'll tell you. And uh, that's from uh, Whistler Tim. So, hey, Tim, thanks, thanks for calling and writing in. You did both. Uh, next up, we got a uh, comment that was left on the website from John. It says, get this, guys. You'll like this. I've just finished listening to all your podcast, Alan, in less than a week while online. And he listened to all 134 episodes. So, wow. Thank you, John. Uh, just like the episodes I will keep rewatching on DVD, The Andy Griffith Show, I'll be listening to the podcast over and over. I'm sure I'll get more from them every time I listen to them. Thanks for your dedication to the greatest show ever. And he also said this. He went into the episode number 134. He had said uh, about the Graskills interview, part two. He said, I'm not a big fan of bluegrass, but as soon as Weavers has the Graskills Mayberry tribute album, uh, I'm going to have Ben send me one. Thanks for all the great episodes. Keep up the great podcast, Floyd. Hey, thanks, John. I really appreciate that. Now we're going to go into from Jimbo. Now this is Jimbo where we're talking about where Opie got his name. That was episode number 129 uh, where Opie got his name. So if you hadn't listened to that, go back and listen. But he says, enjoyed the video cast. 
Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And the other stuff you do. Uh, we'll stop right there for a second. The episodes for the last uh, quite a while, I'm not even sure how far back, are audio. I do the audio. The podcast is audio. But there is video of every episode going back for quite a while. I'm not sure how far back, but several, several months. So if you want to watch the uh, video podcast, you can go to twochairsnowaiting.com. And right there on the episode notes for every episode, there is a uh, there's a link there to the video. So you'll be able to see a video of the podcast. So if you if you enjoy watching video, you can just go down there and watch the video and hear the uh, exact same show you hear normally. So anyway, he was talking about enjoyed the video cast and the other stuff you do. As far as Andy Devine, if you'll remember, Andy Devine was on the uh, episode uh, of Lum and Abner that we used to talk about Opie's name. I was just talking to the president of the National Lum and Abner Society, Uncle Donald Pitchford, yesterday about Andy Devine and his connection with Lum and Abner. I had heard of Opie Cates before this last week, but knew little about him. Interesting stuff. Hey, thanks, Jimbo. I appreciate that. Uh, next up is somebody called Dad. I got a feeling I know who this is. He had commented on episode number 129 where Opie got his name. He says, I was listening to the Opie name podcast. Then the, then the name Andy Devine came up, and you said he played some old westerns. I remember him as Jingles, the sidekick of Wild Bill Hickok, a weekly TV series that was sponsored by Kellogg Sugar Pops. This was probably in the late 50s. I guess that tells my age. It was neat hearing his voice and remembering. Hey, thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. That was my dad wrote in. I appreciate that. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about uh, the Return to Myers Lake episode, number 126. Janet Anderson had this to tell us. She said, Alan, now this is something I need your guys' help with because I did not get to research into this enough. She says, Alan, uh, this question has to do with the Return to Myers Lake. As I was watching one of the episodes of my 50th anniversary DVD sets, uh, that you can get at Weavers. <laughs> I noticed something. During the original end credits, showing Andy and Opie getting their fish and preparing to leave the lake, you can see a white building in the background at the other end of the lake. She said, I tried to zoom in, but it was too fuzzy for me to see much detail. Anyway, I'm wondering if this was the game warden's house or another building. Do you know? Which I don't. Uh, I tried looking at your photo of the game warden's house, but I couldn't tell if they were the same. This is the only time I can actually uh, I can recall actually seeing a building included in any shot of Myers Lake on the show. I wondered if you could uh, satisfy my curiosity. Well, Janet, no, I can't, but I can tell you uh, that the only buildings I know of that are actually around the Franklin Canyon Reservoir, the upper reservoir, is that building uh, that is the game warden's house. But it's also, there is a concrete uh, a concrete bankment uh, on the earthen dam. So the, the side with the water on it, there's concrete on it. So maybe you could see the concrete. That would be, that would look uh, kind of white, I guess, be back there. Maybe that's what you were seeing. Now, today, if you go there on the, I believe the north end of the, reservoir there is a building there but it's it's made out of it's a metal building and it's part of the pumping equipment for the uh, reservoir for the water because they, they draw water out of there so anyway if anybody has an idea about that or if you have some screen captures showing that exact image that she's talking about i couldn't find that particular uh, scene on my dvds so if you have any comments i'd like to hear from you you can help me do some research and be a reporter in the field for two chairs no waiting Next up, we're going to hear from Henry Baldwin. He left this comment over on Facebook. He said, uh, Alan, thanks for your continued work on providing us with the most entertaining podcast. Glad you can use those electron marvels. Keep them coming. Hey, thanks, Henry. I'll do my very best. Next up was Laura Wheeler, also over on Facebook. She says, still loving the Two Chairs No Waiting podcast. I've dropped a small fortune at Weaver's department store, and I love my Andy Griffith-related gifts. I do have two burning questions. In the podcast, where on earth did you get that cutout stand-up picture of Floyd that's behind you in the video podcast? I keep hearing about an audio 
uh, biography, an autobiography of Andy titled My Life. I appreciate it. Any ideas when this book will come out? Well, if you watch the uh, video podcast or even if you just look at the Two Chairs No Waiting uh, podcast website and go down and look at the videos, you should see over my what, left shoulder uh, a Floyd cut out back there. That's actually me because, you know, I do Floyd the Barber. I'm a, I'm a what do we call ourselves? A Mayberry tribute artist. That's what I'm called. So I'm the Floyd the Barber tribute artist. And that was actually used. The, uh, the cutout was actually used to help promote an event that was being held up in, uh, I believe it was in West Virginia. And I didn't actually get to go to that because actually Alabama got hit by a hurricane back <laughs> that weekend. And I couldn't really get out of Huntsville. The weather was unbelievable. But I didn't get to go. But Buddy Griffith... Griffin, he was able to uh, get that for me and gave it to me at Mayberry Day. So I've had it here, and it scares people when they walk around the house and they think somebody's standing there. And I just think it looks good behind me. So anyway, that's what that is. Now, the uh, the book, I really can't tell you much about that. Uh, I don't really have any inside information. I do know that the the work is still in works, but it's just not done. All right, so anyway, thanks for writing in, Laura. And wow, we got a few more. Let me see if I can knock them off. We're 22 minutes in. So this one's from John Robertson. He says, thanks to Abner Peabody, Mr. Dokes, and Grandpa Pyle, I was introduced to your podcast. That is great, John. Thank you. The president of the National Lum and Abner Society, Donnie Pickford, sent me an email recommending your site. Wow. Thank Donnie for me. I really appreciate that a lot. I've been a huge Lum and Abner fan since I was a kid and Andy Griffith Show fan as well. I'm enjoying every episode of your podcast from the beginning. Thank you so much for the great work you're doing. Thanks. And he says, goes on to say, before you get too far off of the topic, there are a couple of more connections between Mayberry and Pine Ridge, the home of Lum and Abner. Howard McNear, Floyd Lawson, as you know him, as we know him, being played, uh, being a veteran radio actor, for many years before the Andy Griffith Show, appeared on Lum and Abner Radio Show a few times playing different characters during its 25-year-plus run. Also, another very active radio actor from radio's golden age, Parley Bear, or Mayor Stoner, as Mayberry fans would know him, auditioned to be on Lum and Abner Show. I'm not aware of any episodes that he was actually in, but I do have an audition recording of him reading for their show. I'm trying to get a copy of that from John. That is great, John. Wow. Thank you so much for writing in and just uh, listening to the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. And there are so many connections between Mayberry and Pine Ridge. It's really amazing. And I'm just trying not to bore you guys with all those, but let's go on here. We got Brian Rodahaver. He wrote in talking about Opie the Man, episode number 131. He says, He's talking about, you know, I'd mentioned in that that it was a color episode. And he says, ah, oh, don't fault the color episodes. A lot of people don't like color episodes. He said, don't fault the color episodes. Anyone who's a true fan of the Andy Griffith Show loves the entire series. Opie's Job, which aired uh, September 13th, 1965, was the first episode broadcast in color. I didn't know that. Uh, plus, it was the single highest rated episode and, uh, and season occurred uh, oh, the single highest rated episode and season occurred in the 1967 to 68 season, which was in color. Hey, Brian, thanks for calling in with that. And finally, we have John Foster. He also is commenting about this particular episode. He says, I agree. Talking about, I think, what Brian had said. All the episodes are great, including the color episodes. Even around our, our Even if around our house, we call Andy's character in the color episodes Cranky Andy. <laughs> he never seemed to enjoy himself as much after Don Knotts left. But from a fan uh, way up there in New Hampshire, he says, by the way, the ending of that episode brought a tear to my eyes, too. Talking about Opie, Bird, the, Bird, uh, Opie the Man. I mean, talking about Opie's job was the name of the episode. Hey, John, thank you for uh, writing and just being part of the Mayberry community. Folks, I hope you'll all continue just to write in. We've, we've started a new thing over at uh, uh, Miss Crump's Blackboard. So if you go to uh, imayberry.com, you'll be able to see the, uh, the link there to the Mayberry Forum. That is Miss Crump's Blackboard. And there's a board there now 
to talk about Two Chairs No Waiting and to visit with other Mayberry fans. There's uh, 200, 300 people signed up over there to do uh, to just visit and talk with one another. So, hey, if you enjoy visiting with one another and getting to know other Mayberry fans, drop by over at Miss Crump's Blackboard, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to have a good time there, too. So we'll have a link in the show notes for that as well. Well, folks, wow, long episode. These feedback episodes, I get excited hearing from you guys, so I talk a lot. But I just want to thank you all for coming. I'd love to hear from you. You can uh, drop me a, an email at floyd at imayberry.com. You can leave a note at twochairsnowaiting.com. You can call me at 888-684-8415. Or you can go over to facebook.com slash twochairs and leave me a message there because uh, I'd love to hear from you. Well, folks, hey, thanks for coming, and we'll see you next week on Two Chairs No Waiting, your Mayberry podcast. Bye, guys.